Let's talk stocks on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna have to shut some stuff down. We are going to be talking about Apple today. We're gonna to be talking about XLF. We're gonna be talking about Bank of America and some others. And we're gonna talk about my awesome, awesome new hat. I absolutely love it. I'm so, so excited. We also have to talk about the spy. We're gonna talk about Q, 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 IWM. Lots of great things to talk about. All right, let me get the live stream going right now on the other computer. Doo, 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 doo. I hope you're having an amazing trading day. Another great trading day in the market. The market is always giving opportunities if you are looking at the right avenues. Hey, Asif, what do you think? Do you like it? Carpe profit, baby. That's right. Uh, you know, the market, as long as you are taking profits, you will never go broke. It's when you do not cut those losers, you do not end up um, managing your money correctly that it will end up really hurting you. So I'm going to put the link for my hat in the, um, yeah, John, the futures are rocking, right? The futures are definitely rocking. Watching that 384 level as well on the uh, SPY, which we are below today. We are below the close of yesterday. We had a massive spike up. Let's rotate on over to the charts. Let me just adjust this. I was doing some training on the charts today in the training pit. And I'm super, super excited. I've been waiting patiently for this hat to arrive. So I'm very, very excited about it. It could not have come at a better time. All right, so we are set up and I wanna show you one year on, somebody asked me to look up the 12 year, vol, excuse me, the yearly volume on a stock. And so I said, you know what, let's check it out. So we will look at that for XLF. It could be very, very interesting. Let me pull up the charts over here. All right, so I've got gold up behind me. I might see some big moves happening in gold on the daily chart we're coming down and testing the volume weighted anchored price from yesterday's price action right here you can see that we've come down this is now the second test here pulled all the way back down to 383.30 maybe i'm going to cancel this remove that alert yes um, that was a sample one that i set up during the teaching today been busy busy teaching as well had a student this morning right at 9.15. So this could pull back and test again at this level. Maybe we we're having a massive shoot up, come back, test, and then bounce higher, right? Maybe this is going to be disbursement with Wyckoff spring up, drop back down. You can't get to the watch list today, really? Issues in getting to the watch list? I'm so sorry, Mark. Oh, you like the background early? Thank you. Did I have CSIQ on your radar for this morning? Uh, I did not have CSIQ. What I did have was Vuzi, TSM, Open, Snap, Ford, Fuel Cell, Plug, Neo, AAL, and Baba. Mark, um, next time if you encounter that, please shoot me a message on Twitter. I'm sorry, I was busy this morning, but it was up on time. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else. Yeah, you wanna check out Melly? Yeah, and we can do uh, Melly. CSIQ. I did talk about CSIQ on my spot with TD Ameritrade yesterday. Um, did you see that, Marco? I was on TD Ameritrade yesterday and I did talk about CSIQ, the green sector, plug, blink, uh, fuel cell, Tesla, iDrive, ICLN. We'll look at them. CSIQ, NNDM. All right. So, Right now on the SPY, a little extended. I'm not sure what these are. I'm just gonna get rid of these. Maybe these are important, maybe not, but I'm going to remove these because they're bothering me. Can we talk the US dollar? Sure, we can talk US dollar. Let's also add CMPS. Yeah, I don't know, maybe they'll replay it. Um, Marco, I was on at 520 yesterday on the TD Ameritrade network, but I was with Nicole uh, Filipides and she, 
man, she looked really tired at the end of the day. I can understand. Having to talk all day long, she has a rough job. That's hard. Is that the EMA? Which EMA, Wall Street Beef? CMPS. And we can also look at dark pool, not dark pool, but we can look at Bitcoin. We can look at Bitcoin in relation to Mara, GBTC, BTBT, uh, BitW. I know you're in that Wall Street beef, uh, Trader Beef. So we will check it out. Check it out, Trader Beef. What do you think? Put the link in the chat. Carpe Profit. Love it. I just got it today. So excited about it. And I had to figure out how on earth I was going to light up my face with a hat on you know, production issues. Just kidding. All right, so let's look at the SPY. So SPY, we're coming down. Now, if we go and I have the daily high low close, here's our close from yesterday. It does put it right on the chart for us. In fact, I don't need to do that. Let's, uh, I can also do that on settings right here and high low pre post market. There we go. No, that's not it. I want the previous day close price Let's make it orange and let's make it a little thicker. All right, that's the previous day close price right here. It doesn't show the day prior to that. So I can turn off the indicator up here. Let's hide this one. All right, so we are below, obviously below yesterday's. So keeping that on watch. Now, Apple did surge today. You guys know I watch Apple and it really is massively moving today right? It is surging like crazy. Where was yesterday's close? All the way back down here, 132. Where are we in relation to the moving averages? We have massively, massively gapped up. We're testing an area that we did have selling pressure before. Up here, the high of this candle, 137.34, and that was our high. So we've set a little bit of a lower high right now. Getting rid of this downward trend here, We'll put it right over here. Obviously the day is not done yet, right? And I don't want it to the high of this candlestick. I'm gonna put it right here. Um, I will adjust this wherever we are at the end of the day because this is now the new high. We were not able to hold up above here, so I don't wanna put it to that upper candlestick because they sold off from that level. They were not able to hold it. So would look, potential target up here, 137.66 as a target that we might see some selling back from the past. Other than that, maybe we're going to see a bit of a sell-off correction on Apple back down to the moving averages. It does happen. We have a crazy up day. Then it comes back to the moving averages two days later. So crazy up day, all right, maybe moving averages will be back down here, 133.43. Will that happen today? Will it happen tomorrow? Will it happen Monday? My crystal ball is a little cloudy, however, the patterns of it coming back to the moving averages tend to happen time and time again. So looking at it for that reason, maybe we'll have a bit of a correction coming back. Let's look at it on the 15 minute chart. It is long and strong right now though. So keeping that in mind, big price action, we broke above this resistance line right here and it surged higher. Uh, I'm looking to see head, shoulders, maybe. Hmm, no, just don't like that. All right, let's also look at the Qs. So no wonder that the Qs are strong. Apple's the number one holding. We're coming up and we just broke above this wedge resistance line, right? It's roughly, I wanna say it's 62% of the time that wedges will break to the downside, roughly 90% of the time that a downward wedge will break to the upside. Oh, and big news coming out about my CMT exam coming up. So I will share that too. Uh, earnings report on November, uh, January 27th for Apple. Yes, that's next week. So we will see. Also, Amazon and Big Tech will be reporting. They usually all report the same week, end of January. And what's interesting is the end of January tends to be the end of the downward turn in the SPY for the seasonality. So this is going against regular seasonality with everything that happened. Potentially, the surge is in relation to uh, Biden coming out and saying, hey, I'm going to continue with that stimulus. Pelosi just came out and announced it as well. We're looking forward to moving forward with the stimulus. So all of that maybe is inflating prices, right? Everything that's coming out 
the Fed, the beginning of January, just recognized that inflation is happening. They're potentially going to slow down the buying of securities, potentially looking at raising interest rates. However, not right now. We have to look at what they're doing now. One of the best things that I took away from the CMT exam is do not fight the Fed. If they are looking to stimulate, well, we've seen it happen from back in March, massive upward move, right? 2021 with GAN, potential year for massive correction. Let's look over here at XLF, right? XLF, daily chart. Yeah, John saying, I think we'll see some profit taking very soon on QQQ and the SPY, keep an eye peeled. And I also have to say thank you to everyone that did buy me a cup of coffee, right? If you guys like the live stream, first of all, hit the like button subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you will get the notifications when I go live. If anything were to happen to Twitter, you'll get the YouTube notification. If anything happens to YouTube, I will go to BitChute. I am on WeMe as well. Um, just still putting it out there in case anything happens with big tech that I will transition over and you guys will be able to find me there. Um, so again, thank you for everybody that bought me cups of coffee. It's down in the comment section if you guys want to contribute. All right, so XLF. I was doing a training in the training pit where I helped to teach people all about the dark pools and how to trade around them. We are a team there that helps to uh, educate people. We have two webinars a day. And I was talking all about TradingView and someone said, hey Jane, do you have a way to put on the volume from a year? So I said, well, you know what, probably. You guys can see we have the volume down here. I'm gonna put it on this chart so you'll be able to actually see it because my I see my, um, my image is blocking the volume for this one. So I said, you know what? Let's put it on a 12 month chart. Boom, right? 12 month chart, yes. All right, here we have our volume. Well, when do we have super crazy volume? Well, this is my, my targets that I was practicing drawing on the screen, right? Well we have massive, massive volume 2008. What happened in 2008? That, you know, we ended up having a massive financial downward turn in the market. Look at where we are coincidentally right now, right? This is the high of right here. So we are just above it. Market did crash. Yeah, very good, Asif. Market did crash. So we are up above it. This massive run up, now it makes sense. We were breaking a major level. Now what happens if we drop down below 30? Well, likely first test down here. First test probably 29.50, then 29. This was probably bigger buying, now we see, because it was taking it all the way up above 30. It was just before this breakout zone on the yearly chart, right? Well, maybe it'll come back down to 28.20, test, bounce up to 30, and then come back down again. That would be interesting, right? If we came all the way back down, put this right here. Now, if we started to see that we dropped below 17.60, wow then we're likely in an economic turmoil, the banks are dropping. So keep an eye on XLF because I'm seeing this and it's very, very interesting to me. I don't know what this chart is right here, these lines, maybe it's on a shorter time frame. Where is that line coming from? Ah, put it back to the 12 month. I'll delete those. They're important, I can put them back on. So looking at it, looking at the banks, the banks did report fairly good earnings, right? But for some reason, they are starting to break down. Why is this not, oh, it's too compact. So definitely watching this. We'll watch this as a potential indication that maybe there could be a bigger downward turn in the market. Right? If the banks start having issues, they look very nice and strong right now. Big volume so far this year. Uh, not so far this year, but last year. 
we had bigger volume than 2019. And we came down and we hit the, so interesting to see how all this stuff plays out, that we came down and we hit the 21 EMA down here. Let's get rid of this. And let's get rid of this. And let's get rid of this line. And let's get rid of this line. <laughs> all right. So we came all the way back down. Look at that support from back in 2003. So when we're looking at all of this, it's I wish I'd looked at this back in March is all I have to say. I wish I'd looked back at this back in March. But now we're at a high. We're testing that resistance. Are we going to be able to hold above it? On the weekly chart, does it look like we had just a, yeah, it looks like maybe, are we going to curl back down? We're testing the low of this candlestick. Maybe we come down to 30, 38 and then a test of 30 and then back down here to 29.50. Hmm, let's see. Let's see what happens. It's interesting, right? All right, let's look at IWM. So IWM, I know that we don't have bat scientists here today, but let's put this on a daily chart over here and a 15 minute chart on the right. All right, so IWM, we hit 215, round number, $5 mark. We're pulling back down, starting to see some weakness. This is probably one of the weaker ones of the indexes. I'm going to move this down here. One of the weaker ones in the indexes so far down almost 1%. Money flow from Russell 2000 into the queues. All right, cool, happens. The more times you see it, the more times you'll note, potentially long the queues, short RWM, I mean IWM. Dow Jones is also down just a hair. Uh, so looking at the Dow Jones, will we come back down, break below this level? We are still somewhat in this box and could break down further. Would look for 307.23 as a support area if we do break down there. All right, let's look. Gold as well has had some bigger price action, testing a trend line today. Will we break above this or not? We obviously are below yesterday's price action. Uh, I was drawing cup and, uh, not cup and handled, head and shoulders over here for education purposes. Let me clean up the chart. Too many drawings. I wish I had a little eraser tool for trading view. And I've asked them if they could put short volume over here because I just discovered, I just discovered the shares float. It's not there for every single ETF or stock, but for most of them, it is there and would love to see that they have short volume there as well. So I'm gonna see what I can do. And equi volume. those are my two things that I would love to have for uh, TradingView. All right, VXX, we're starting to gain a little bit of strength here, coming to the upside back into this box. Uh, I'm going to make my image a little smaller for you guys so you can see it there. All right, and looking, are we going to, let's move this right here to this day. Let's see, where's the high right there? 1727. So it's sort of like a moving resistance. If we break above 1727, 1760, 1880 is my big, hey, this market's going into a correction. Pay attention. All right. And let's look at the stocks on the list, right? Let's also check out Amazon. So Amazon shot up, hit the three 3,200 level and yesterday and then surged higher. So massive bullish day, but we did hit the resistance up here. So there is a bigger block trend almost. It's like we have this little mini one and there was only one scanner that had live short volume statistics, but they removed it because their provider was charging them too much. Ah, yeah. I know that um, TrendSpider is asking if they will provide, their data provider will give it to them. So Amazon, another amazing day, $50 to the upside. I did move, miss this run up. I was extra cautious um, as well. Baba had a big move up off of that. I said that 40 point move, willing to risk $4 for 40 points and it performed. I was not in on the trade. I was playing it very cautious because it could have been delisted at the time with the executive orders of the Chinese stocks. And I didn't want to be in something like that, like Lucan Coffee as well. 
Google? Yeah, let's check out Google as well right now. So Google likely surging to the upside. All of the FANG stocks have done really well since the inauguration. Uh, we do have a bit of an abandoned baby up there. It looks like we could be seeing a bit of a sell-off going into earnings. Maybe that's what this is about. Maybe the big guys are taking it up, sucking the longs in to sell to them, only to drop this down further. I don't know. I'm not the one with the billions of dollars yet on the market that can control the market. Um, but maybe that's what they're setting this up for. Interesting thought, huh? All right, trying to suck longs in. So let's go continue on the list. First one on the long list, Vuzi today. Hopefully all my levels are here, yes. And came down, had a nice short below 1120. TSM, been surging higher. Semiconductors are doing really well, why? Well, you know, what? what's the reason why semiconductors are doing so well? What, do you, what is everybody using while they're at home? Computers. We've got to go back to the components of such things. Computers, telephones, tablets, iPads, um, TV screens, all that sort of stuff. So semiconductors are doing very well, potentially. Uh, and you can see after earnings, they did well as well. So is this a sell-off right up here? Maybe it's just going to come back, regain some steam down here, and continue to move higher open as well hadn't heard of it before this morning however had a nice gap to the upside and a bit of a sell-off now we let taiwan in the states for the first time in history tsm arizona facility nice well and i heard taiwan's growth has been one of the strongest markets since uh for 2020 that uh taiwan had major exponential growth this year snap as well had a big move to the upside above 5360 you can see that was a fairly strong resistance level over here on the daily chart. Came down, tested that level, <laughs> my bear level, hey, potential short level, and bounced right on up. Ford as well. A lot of the cars are doing really well, the car sector. Um, looking at that, GM doing really well, Ford doing really well, Tesla doing well. Let's look at Tesla too. I didn't have Tesla on my chart today, but Ford broke out above 1150. Nice trade up to 1210. Let's look at Tesla. I didn't have it on the list to adjust, but uh, let's check it out. Still somewhat in this like triangle phase, right? It's not going one way or the other and really watching it. We've had two down days. Will this surge higher head on up to, it almost looks like a flag, right? Here's our pole. And we have this right here. If we break above 860, potential move $60 or more up to 925 is where I would be looking as a target. Or we might pull back down here, down to 768. So still keeping my eye on Tesla, but it's going sideways right now. So a tough one to trade. Intraday, it does have movement. However, it's not trending on the daily chart right now. So not an easier easy trade there. Fuel cell has corrected, pulled back, pulled back down to the moving average, offered a nice short uh, opportunity overnight, and then ended up moving to the upside today. Finally broke out <clears throat> up above, off of 17.25 up to 17.80. Amazing water bottle too. If you guys don't already have these Camelbacks, they are waterproof. So great to have by your trading desk so you never spill your drink on your desk. All right, plug as well. Plug looks like it's setting up. It has a bit of a downward trend here and bounced off of the 8 EMA today, ran up higher. A lot of the um, green energies are moving thanks potentially to Biden as well. So we had the major run up, didn't let anybody get in, gapped it up, gap fake out. If it broke down below here, would have had a very nice $5 trade to the downside. However, it bounced up above. Neo as well. Somebody just gave Neo a price target, I think of $90 or something. That always makes me weary. Um, even though we, it would need to break this downward trend first for me to feel confident to the upside. Ah, oh, thanks Asif. Yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, new to watching me,
please hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so that you will receive notifications when I go live. I do this every day. Today was a little bit um, delayed because I was on Angela Miles Business AM with a spot with her. So talking about XLF and gold today. All right, so here we have AAL. It's pulled back down, hitting that 20 simple moving average, hitting the trend line right here, and moving right now, bouncing off of it to the upside. We do have earnings coming up. Um, they did lay people off. Then there was the stimulus coming out saying we're going to allow you to rehire people. A bit of an inverted head and shoulders here. So my, maybe, maybe we could look at target wise $1.67 from here, $16.38. So let's go $16.40, $1.37, roughly $17.80 maybe as a target to the upside for earnings, maybe, right? That would bring us right to the resistance area over here on the left. If it broke out from there, we might be seeing this up at 1950. Jets as well would also be another way to trade that. But AAL did come out, excuse me, United came out today saying that they had lower than anticipated uh, earnings. And maybe that's the reason why AAL is a sympathy trade in relation to that. All right, Baba as well. So Baba, massive gap up. Here's that big move, right? It said 226 up to 262. Well, it happened. I missed the ride. It's okay. There'll be more opportunities. Coming back down to the moving average here, maybe it will find support on the 50 simple moving average and the four and the eight converging together. Yeah, I'll go over gold as well. I did touch on it above. Uh, Arun, I already did Amazon actually. So that was earlier. So you can go back and watch the live stream or you might be able to actually move back. I think you can move back in the live stream to look at it. So check that out. And then you can join us live again. Has anybody tried to do that? I think I did that a lot with the inauguration stuff and going backwards to see things and then it, I was able to come to real time. All right, so Melly right now looks like a bearish engulfing, taking out the day prior, found support right here. Uh, no, no luck, thanks Asaf. So found support over here uh, at the high of this candlestick and also the moving average. We do not have super high volume on this big sell-off. So there's not a lot of buying coming in. The sellers are saying, hey, we're gonna take it down right now. And when the buyers are ready to bring it up, they did bring it up here, roughly 1914. And now it's bounced a little bit. Curious to see where this ends up end of day. Maybe it will come back down to 1860 and then find support there. Let's look at it on the bigger picture. Where are, what do we have going on? One, two, three, four. This looks like a corrective wave. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. Maybe this is setting up for an ABC corrective wave to the downside. I would keep that in mind. All right, uh, CSIQ. So CSIQ, Canadian Solar, Green Energy, the energy space is doing really, really well and broke out of this downward trend line, surging higher. Hitting 64, all right, well, if we measure the flagpole, let's go here. Let's measure the flagpole from here to here, $7.51, and let's go from here to here, oh, $7.51, it went above it a little bit, so it's right on target, right? It has met that flagpole move. And now this maybe will come back down correct and resurge again. So maybe if we look at one, two, three, four, five, maybe we will see that we have an ABC corrective wave, at least a pull back down to the moving averages. All right, NNDM. NNDM surging nicely as well. I think we might have had some dark pull activity on this yesterday. Let's look at it. Do, 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 do. NNDM. I feel like we were talking about this yesterday. Mm, 73,000, 11.50. 11.50 had some, so yeah, we had some dark pool activity yesterday, and now it's moved as well, moved on the breakout. It was close to uh, the four, obviously the four wasn't here yesterday, but it has moved nicely off of that. And now it looks as if 
on the shorter time frame. 13 would be that resistance for the breakout, maybe a curl up here, maybe we have a bit of a bull flag. Let's look if we were to measure the move for the flag, 1170 to 119, not even 119, maybe one, uh, 112. So potential if we were to have a bigger move off of this, up 112 to roughly 13.96 or 14 dollars potentially for the end of day if we get a squeeze price action on it. Did you trade OBLN yesterday? No, I did not. I did not trade that ASIC. All right. Uh, any other ones that you guys want to check out? I will put on OBLN and we will put up gold as well. I know you wanted to look O B L N. All right. Yeah, no, OBLN had a nice big move to it, but I missed that price action. Missed it. Can't take them all, right? There's so many opportunities in the stock market every single day. It's not possible to capitalize on every single one. And I'm okay with that. There's going to be some that make 500%. Guess what? You can also do that with an option when it's going your way if you price it correctly. All right, let's also look at GLD. So GLD setting up, maybe we will see it really, I really want it to break above. I had a trend line here and it's now gone. Maybe it's because I was looking right there. Right there. So watching, look at how we came right to this trend line and broke down. It broke above, came back, shot down. Now we're testing again. It's kind of like a, I don't know, <laughs> looks like inverted head and shoulders. Or maybe it's a head, a shoulder, head, shoulder, and then the neckline is down here. I don't know. Watching it to see. We have this triangle right here, right? If we were to measure it from... Here's our high, let's measure it. Let's do conservative measurement, right? Conservative measurement from here to here, 1955. And we were to measure here, we're looking at roughly 195, maybe in the next how many weeks, right? Looks like an inverted cup. I don't know, it just, it, let's do this. Let's hide some of these. take away and let's look at it. We'll check out SPCE, Pauline. Yeah. All right. So right here, let's just turn off all the moving averages for a second. Just look strictly at the price. It went up, came down, gaps a lot. Right. Looks like there's almost an inner triangle right here and it held as support. Do you guys see that? In fact, I see it more now that I did this, right? So it looks like we had this triangle. This was a fake out day, came up, and then we have another one. So maybe we'll go through like another move up here and then bounce and then up. That could happen too. Or it could come to 177, test up to 181, 177.50, and then surge higher. Let's look at SPCE, and then I'm gonna wrap it up for today. Go eat some lunch, I am hungry. SPCE, we have an island, trading island up here. So I would watch for break down below 30 or break up above 33. This could be an island and then continuation like a runaway up, or are we going to break down below 30 and drop back down to 27, 28? Nice eyes, Pauline, very nice. And the biggest volume day, right here. So we're still trading within this volume. In fact, let's, not 12 months, but let's look at one week. Yeah, on the weekly chart, it doesn't look as much of an island, but we're up above on the weekly chart. It came back and tested and maybe continue to the upside. All right, guys, have an amazing trading day, as always. Carpe Profit sees those profits one trade at a time, and I will see you all tomorrow morning, all right? Or tomorrow afternoon, 12.15. See you then.